stand myself. <laughs> Hi everyone, so today I am going to be making myself my own corset or corset using the Butterwick B4669 pattern. I am going to be using a pattern today. I am not a super skinny person. I am more on the mid to plus size range and so I bought the size 14 through 20 Butterwick pattern. I found mine on Amazon, but you can order off of the website itself, or you can also find it, I believe, on Etsy. The problem is the one on the website so far that I have seen is the size 2 to 12. I think that's the sizing. It might be a little bit bigger than that. Like I said in a previous video, I do really want to dress a certain type of way. It is really difficult for me to find clothing to fit me properly, so I either wear a really baggy sweater or clothes that just aren't particularly my favorite. The certain type of style that I want to wear is more of the big flowing skirts and the corset, kind of like a renaissance type of look. I do like dressing in other types of ways, but I do really love that clothing, so I want to make some of my own. So for me, I'm either going to be using um, A or B. I'm not sure if I want to do pattern A or B. They are very similar with the difference of the peplum at the bottom of B. I'm not sure what I want to go with yet, or what's going to be more flattering on myself so I'm going to sew the top half before I sew the peplum half to add because you add that separately to see if I actually want to add that or not. For me, I am going to be using the largest size on here. I'm not a size 20 in clothing, but with the way that the back of this pattern shows, it does say that the measurements I should be a size 20 in this specific pattern. I'm not sure why. I don't know if it's because it's not like a plus size pattern or if it's a misses pattern. I don't really know. I am generally a size 14 to 16. My measurements for me are my waist is 36 inches around and around my bust is 47 inches, I believe. 46 to 47 inches because I do have a larger chest. Also do have like a larger bum area. So my hips around from my hips all the way around the largest part of my butt is 50 inches. So I am an hourglass shape fully. I have, you know, larger at the top, really small in the middle, and then larger at the bottom. So it is kind of difficult for me to find clothes. And I hope that <laughs> this, because it is something that you cinch in with a tie that I'll be able to make nicely for myself. And I'm not sure if the peplum is going to be flattering on me or not. So like I said, I will see if I do want to add the peplum to be or not. So let me show you the fabric really quickly on what I bought and then we'll start making it. So I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to make this a reversible corset or not. I think that that would be really cool because then it would have a dual purpose and different types of fabric that would look cool. So for the fabric that I definitely know I want to use on the outside of the bodice piece is this really nice faux suede material on the inside. It, it's not soft, so there is like a clear difference between the right and the wrong side of the fabric. I bought this about two years ago from an Etsy seller. If I can find where I bought it from, the shop that I bought it from, I will link it down below. I bought it specifically to make myself a fanny pack for when I roller skate. And then the piece that would be the lining of the fabric, if I want to make it reversible, is this brown leaf pattern. It's very fallish. I bought this last year, but I believe Joanne still carries this. I believe that for this fabric, I did buy either a fourth or half of a yard from Joanne's. And like I said, I am using the largest size on the pattern and it has plenty of space for me to cut two pieces out of this fabric as well as the binding piece if I did want to use that. I'm not sure if I want to make my own binding like the pattern has an option for or if I want to use one that I already have and the binding that I have already is this nice burgundy color which I think would look pretty cool against the orange but I might make my own binding. I'm not sure yet. So if I do make it reversible I am going to use this as the outside and this is the inside. The actual corset itself it does say that you're supposed to have grommets. I currently do not have any grommets and I'm not going to go to the store right now to get any. So I am thinking of making my own buttonholes. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So I will show you how to do that. You'll also need an awl and thread and that's it. So let's get to the pattern and the sewing.
So I'm just showing the pieces that you need. You need part of the pattern one, pattern piece two, and pattern piece three. I'm also going to show you pattern piece six and seven, but I did not end up sewing the peplum, so you don't need those unless you're going to sew the peplum. After I do cut out pattern pieces, I do iron the pieces they don't look too perfect but they were far worse before and now they actually lay out you can still see lining in it and i and i iron it on the lowest setting it's completely optional you don't have to do that for the fabric pieces you do want to cut everything with the fabric folded in half with the wrong sides touching and you need to cut the pattern piece three on a fold and two and ones do not have to be on a fold and this will be for your lining and main fabric as well. Okay, so I've cut out the pattern pieces. If you know anything about patterns and you know that they have these little markings where there's triangles and dots and stuff like that and it tells you to match them up, I would say on this particular pattern, that's super important because if you look here, there is a curved side. I think these are called princess seams. I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me if I'm wrong. But the way that you wanna do this when you, when you put it on is you have to pin it to where these all of these little dots right here match up so you'll pin right here then you'll pin to have these dots match these dots and then these dots match this dot and then these triangle it says to have the dots match the dots and then the triangles match the triangles on the pattern but if you look here the actual triangles on this side don't really match up so I don't know why it says that and then it gives you this extra little bit here I am not 100% sure why it's like that I don't know if that's something that gets hidden when you do the bias or not I don't know if that's a flaw in the pattern or if I just don't know what the heck I'm doing so <laughs> that's it and I just wanted to like tell you a little bit about those side edges in case you are having trouble with them because it is a curved edge being matched with a straight edge and it could be a little bit confusing. So I just wanted to let you know. Now let's go sew. Just to jump in here really quickly, I have only sewn those first two pieces together. The seam is curved and I did figure out why there's that extra piece. It is just the seam. As you can see right after you sew it up, it's there, but when you bind it, it will lay down after you attach those edges so you won't even see it. You don't even have to cut it off. You don't have to worry about it. I thought I sewed it, cut it wrong and I was like, oh no, I added too much in the, the corner, but I didn't. So what I do want to tell you really quickly is I am someone who presses my stuff a lot of people don't iron while they sew but i just think it gives it a cleaner look and cleaner lines you don't have to if you don't want to however i definitely do so for seams like that what i have is a taylor's ham you don't need to have this but it does make pressing ridges or curves or anything like that a little bit easier you can find these on amazon and i will link one below for you or joann's when i bought mine joann's was offering a 60 percent off coupon and in store i think it was about 16 to 17 dollars and with the coupon i got it for about five to six dollars so i would recommend buying one from joann's or michael's if you could get your hands on a 40 to 60 percent off coupon then it'll be worth it if you're someone who sews anyways So the final piece to making the corset aside from the grommet holes is the binding around the entire thing and I want to show and explain to you how to do this just in case you're not very well at following patterns and it's a little confusing because sometimes the, the wording that they use in patterns they say a little bit more than they actually need to say so let me show you exactly what I've done and what I've had to do because I did run out of the color I was using so some people 
people choose to hand stitch on their binding, it does give a nice finishing look, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to machine stitch it on using a similar color to the binding that I am using, and I will have to switch it twice because I was originally using a burgundy color, which is right here on the entire thing. I think it looks nice. It's very um, pretty in contrast to the oranges. Uh, if I could have picked up an orange I would have but or a dark brown but that's neither here nor there and if I really wanted to change it I could easily do that by putting binding another binding on top but this is the color I have for now and then I did run out of the purple I did have three yards of binding and that was not enough so I was able to go the entire back here all the way up to this part as well as on the other side the exact amount and then I also chose to put some of the purple binding that I had left at the very front where the grommet's going to actually go. Now for the neck piece and the very bottom piece, I'm going to be using black and that's because I ran out of the purple not a big deal because it still I think looks pretty nice and again like I said if I really want to change it out I can just seam rip it out and replace it which maybe I will do but for now I'm pretty happy with how it's looking or just sew some additional binding on top now for the pieces that you're gonna connect I have not attached this binding yet because I want to show you how to put it on let's sew it and then I will show you how to add in the buttonholes and then we'll be done so let's go do that part the way that binding comes in the package is it is already folded and creased and hemmed so all you have to do is line it up to the pieces that you want and clip it on and that's it. Okay, so the corset is completely finished aside from the eye holes where the grommets would be for the lacing portion. This is what it's looking like so far. The front, the back, and then it is reversible. So here is the other side with the front and the back. The last thing that I have to do is poke some holes into this part right here where it's going to be laced up. There are five holes per side, which means there's 10 holes altogether. What you want to use for this is something called an awl. This is an awl. It's just a sharp pointy tool. And the one that I have is a bead awl. It looks like this. Mine clearly is not big enough, it is a bead awl. So I am going to use the awl to initially make the holes and then I am going to make it a little bit bigger, probably using a pin or a chopstick to shove it through just so that it's a nice size, not that big, just so that it's a nice size hole to put the lacing or whatever it is that you're going to tie up your corset with. So let's get to poking these holes and then sewing will be done. So for the eyelets, you just wanna poke the hole through and you want to be sewing with embroidery thread because it works the best, it covers the most area. And I will post a link below to where you can find a more in-depth tutorial on how to do this. And that's it. the reveal. I really hope that you enjoy the way that it turned out because I love the way it looks. So here is the final piece. I think it turned out so good. It fits really well. I did tie the front with just a little bit of red bias tape. Obviously, I would not wear it like this. As well as the clothes, I just put something on that would look 
kind of okay with it. I'm not gonna reverse it at the moment, but as you can see, it does have the really nice sleeves on the inside. Back, I think, turned out really well too. You can see it looks like this. And I think it turned out so good. It fits really well. I did have to tighten it quite a bit because I did make it two sizes bigger than I normally am, but that's okay because I would prefer to have a little extra room. If I loosen it, it is, you know, really loose on me. And so I don't mind. It is a little loose right here because like I said, it is a little bit bigger, but that's okay with me. That just means that I can wear some bigger sleeved things in this. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it turned out so good. Just for reference, this does cover my entire waist area. Like obviously my stomach is down here, but my waist is right here. And I am 5'3 and a half, so just for a reference of about how long this does fall. I did not end up using the peplum, but that's all right. And so yeah, uh, give this a try. I will post a link in Amazon to where you can find it as well as the website down below so that you can check out the pattern for yourself. If you did enjoy this video, please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to. Let me know what you liked and what you would have done differently. I promise to make sure you have a fun time here. You might, or you might just think I'm crazy. I don't know. If you want to stick around, again, like I said, subscribe. I would really, really love to have you be a part of my little channel family. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye. Is it dancing with me for you? Is it dancing with me for you?